If there is one place that has a lot of diverse culture and history, it's Africa. Its huge size, more than 30 million square kilometers, is home to a huge number of ethnic groups, languages, customs, and historical stories. We have the lovely Berber communities in North Africa, the colorful culture of the Maasai in the East, the drumbeat of West African tribes, and the old wisdom of the Sun people in the South. But Africa's appeal goes beyond its many different cultures. It is also full of important resources. It's the world's storehouse of important goods because it has a lot of arable land, a lot of mineral wealth, and a lot of precious metals and gemstones. Its lush rainforest, fertile fields, and large number of animals are essential for not only keeping its own people alive but also given the rest of the world the resources it needs. Given all of these riches, it would make sense to think that Africa would be a thriving, wealthy continent. But the truth is very different. Even though Africa is rich, it still has structural problems that cause widespread poverty and huge differences. Its growth has been slowed by things like government instability, corruption, and an unequal distribution of resources. So how can a region like Africa, which has so many valuable resources, be so poor even though it has so much? This question makes us want to learn more about how different historical, economic, political, and social forces have worked together to create this long-lasting mystery. So in this video, we will be looking for the answer to the question, why is Africa poor and what consequences brought this to the continent that's called the cradle of humanity. But before we get into this video, kindly subscribe, like and share this video with your friends. It will greatly help this channel reach more people and visit our website at www.africanboot.com to learn more about African history. Thank you. Africa, which is known as the cradle of humanity because of its many ancient Romans and early human history, has a strange story to tell. On one hand, it led to some of humanity's most important successes, like the development of agriculture, the rise of advanced societies like ancient Egypt, and the spread of cultural and intellectual traditions. And on the other hand, it has to deal with the harsh fact of poverty, injustice, and underdevelopment in the modern world. So how did they get to this? When we think about Africa's long history, which includes great empires like the Egyptians, Carthaginians, Malians, Songhai, and Great Zimbabwe, it seems natural to think that the continent's history of success would carry over into the modern age. After all, these societies' groundbreaking improvement in farming, math, engineering, art, and government left an incredible mark on the history of the world, but that is not the case. To really understand what started Africa's suffering, we need to dig deep into the many factors at play, and we will look at five of these factors in this video. Our journey takes us to the start of slavery, which may be one of the most important and historically significant events that disrupted Africa's history. Slavery is a small part of Africa's history, but it had a lasting damage on the continent. To understand its lasting effect, we have to go back into history to a time when human pain and exploitation were at an all-time high. The transatlantic slave trade, which happened from the 15th to the 19th centuries, is one of the darkest parts of history. During this time, millions of Africans were taken away from their homes and set across the dangerous Atlantic to work in harsh conditions on farms in the Americas. It is estimated that 12 to 15 million Africans were taken from their homes. That is more than the population of Belgium. The effect of this human tragedy is still being felt hundreds of years later. Not only did it kill a lot of people, but it also threw local communities, social structures, and systems of governance out of balance. Many parts of Africa were made weaker and more vulnerable when labor and resources were taken from them to help European powers and American countries. The tragedy of the transatlantic slave trade is closely linked to the second historical factor that Africa had to face. It's a layer that shines a light on one of the most important things about Africans who were taken from their homes against their will, their wide range of skills and craftsmanship. When you think about it, it's not hard to believe that many of the 50 million Africans who made a dangerous trip across the Atlantic were skilled craftsmen and craftswomen. These people had a wide range of skills and information that covered a wide range of crafts such as blacksmiths, weaving, poetry, carpentry, metalwork and different art traditions. The fact that these highly skilled people were among the slaves shows that many African societies had a lot of cultural varieties and technological progress before the transatlantic slave trade. Most of the time, these class people were experts in their fields with the information that has been passed down from generation to generation. Their skills were not only essential to the way African societies worked, but they could have made a big difference in the growth and progress of the places they had to leave behind. 
The certain is that the skills and knowledge of these crafters were used to power the new world economy. Many were forced to work on farms, in mines and in factories, often in harsh conditions. This helped the European colonizers and American colonies grow economically. Their skills were used to make things like delicate metal work and textiles that were very important to the economy of the Americas. The effect of this abuse is still being felt today. It did not only rob African communities of their skilled workers, but it also fed a system that treated people with these amazing skills like they were less than human. Even after slavery was outlawed, people still wanted slaves to work for them. This is the third factor in Africa's complicated past that we need to look at. During this time, Europeans started to settle on the African continent. This is usually seen as the continuation of the economic and political interest that drove the global slave trade, but this time, it was called colonization. When the transatlantic slave trade ended in the 19th century, European economical values changed. Slavery was no longer a good way to get work done, but the desire for Africa's huge wealth and resources did not go away. European powers often used force and exploitation to take over parts of Africa. They did this because they wanted to expand their empires and to make more money. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when colonization was at its peak, European forces took over political and economical power. For the benefit of the colonial powers, these colonial regimes took advantage of Africa's many natural resources. European systems of government, law, and administration were put in place even though they didn't always take into account African societies and institutions. During this time, Africans were forced to work and support the colonial economy. This was similar to how slaves were forced to work during the slave trade. Africa was deeply and permanently changed by colonization. It caused societies to fall apart, took advantage of the economy, and broke up cultural and social norms. When colonial powers drew borders, they often split communities and ethnic groups and this has caused a lot of problems that Africa is still facing today. The end of the colonial period in history, which was marked by the wave of freedom movement in the middle of the 20th century, was a turning point for many parts of Africa. This time period had a lot of big effects that still have an effect on society today. This lasting legacy is especially important when we look at the complicated nature of Africa's politics. The mixing of different ethnicities, cultures, and customs has created a unique and often complicated way of running a country. This is called ethnic politics. The history of colonization in Africa was a key factor in shaping the ethnic world we see today. When colonial forces drew borders, they often didn't take into account the natural ethnic and cultural differences on the continent. Colonization also left behind an unequal division of economic and political resources, often based on a person's race. Because of this, people's ethnic background are often a big part in how politics work in Africa. Many Africans vote based on the person's tribe, forgetting the intent the person has for the country. In some places, this has led to political instability and violence as different ethnic groups fight for control of state resources and power. And the sad part is that most of these elected people are working for their colonial masters with no intent of helping their people. Of course, African governments can have a hard time balancing the wants and interests of different ethnic groups, but they do so without really looking at the root cause of it all. Striking a balance that promotes inclusion and growth while addressing past hurts is an ongoing process. When you look at Africa's politics through the lens of ethnic politics, you get a deep understanding of how the colonial era's effects are still being felt. This historical background is very important as African countries try to deal with the complicated and varied effects of both different ethnic groups and colonization. So talking about ethnic politics is important if you want to understand the complex web of problems that is shaping the future of the continent right now. This brings us to the fifth factor, the military interventions by the West in Africa. Africa has been affected by many things outside of it, such as military actions by Western forces. These actions, which are often driven by geopolitical interests, have had a big effect on the way politics work on the continent. They have sometimes made ethnic tensions worse, messed up government systems, and left permanent scars on the countries they hit. When Africans wanted independence from their colonizers, the West came into Africa and killed most of their leaders who didn't go along with their plan. The list of this is plenty, but here is a few. 
The military actions by the West in Africa show how hard it is for African countries to find a good balance between independence and working with the rest of the world. It shows how important it is to have a fair and open relationships with other countries while protecting their own interests and stability. The historical and current context of these actions show how important it is for African countries to be able to make their own political decisions. So what do all these factors have to do with why Africa is poor in the modern age you might ask? And the answer is a lot. Don't make the mistake of looking at these five factors individually but instead look at them as one big system that's meant to keep Africa poor. When the slave trade brought about the worst time in African history, millions of Africans were forced to move to the West because of this cruel practice, where they had to go through unimaginable misery and pain. Because of this, Africa lost a big chunk of its workforce and a big chunk of its intellectual wealth. The tax was huge for the generation of Africans who came after. They had to basically start over with their societies, even though they often had few resources and a few people with useful skills. Many people with skills in different areas were taken away from their homes and held as slaves. This meant that there were few, if any, skilled people to teach and guide the next generation. This lack of information and skills made putting society back together even harder. Africa's problems did not end when slavery was outlawed. With the widespread of European settlement, the continent had to deal with another huge problem. During the infamous scramble for Africa, European powers decided on their own how to divide up African lands without consulting or asking the people of those lands. This split not only ignored the natural borders and historical links between African communities, but it also left Africans shocked and confused. Also, this division meant that Africa's huge and varied resources were no longer controlled by the people who lived there. Instead, they were taken over by foreign forces who often didn't care about the well-being or growth of the people who lived there. Africa's resources, land and natural beauty were used for profit while its people were often left out and forced to work under harsh colonial rule. So after most African countries gained independence, the only thing they knew was to stay loyal to the tribe which led to ethnic politics. This form of politics often means political leaders try to consolidate power along ethnic lines, making ethnic divisions worse. This can lead to corruption, bad mismanagement of resources, and economical stagnation. Ethnic tension can also lead to war and instability, which are bad for business and growth. And it doesn't help that when this instability starts, armed actions by the West upset government structures and makes the conflict worse. We all know that the West is not really interested in the well-being of Africa, but its own interest. Western powers have been known to back leaders or groups that are in line with their own goals, even if the local people don't want it. This can lead to puppet governments that cares more about what Western countries want than what their own people need. The idea of democracy is often used as a cover to justify these actions, but true democracy is based on self-determination, which means that the people of a country are free to choose their own leaders and to decide their own fate. Clearly, Africa cannot really make decisions on their own since the West always seem to think they know what is best for us. And in the end, they exploit the continent for profit, taking away the wealth that is supposed to go to the people. And any African leader that opposes them is seen as a threat. And you know what happens to them, right? So with all these factors, I hope you really understood the answer to the question, why is Africa poor? It doesn't sound strange at this point that Africa is kept poor for a reason, and the reason is that Western government wants to have full control of the resources the continent has in order to make profit from them. Hopefully, this will be coming to an end very soon. But that's a topic for another video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.